what do you do in suspect corneas? Uh, so this is, uh, I want to talk about Smile Extra and my preference uh, for Smile Extra. I am a consultant for Carl Zeiss uh, Meditech, but have no financial interest. Uh, first, we'll have to look at uh, features of uh, borderline or suspect topography. So this is very important to uh, identify cases which are suitable for the extra procedures. If you have steep corneas, more than 45 diopters, if you have an asymmetric bow tie with a skewed radial axis, if you have inferior steepening, if you have an inferior superior asymmetry of more than 1.4 diopters, a posterior uh, increased posterior elevation with or without a thin packy, these are all uh, uh, cases where you will have to uh, suspect an abnormal or borderline uh, topography and then look at whether you what you can do, what are the choices for suspicious topography with a stable uh, refraction and you want to do uh, refractive surgery. So the options are you can do an accelerated cross-linking along with PRK or LASIK, it's known as PRK extra or LASIK extra or you avoid uh, corneal procedures and go in for a fakey chiral, um, that is another option. And uh, the relatively new modality is uh, Smile Extra. So today I'll be speaking about uh, Smile Extra. What is the hesitation for Smile Extra? Basically, there are a few uh, concepts. One is that Smile itself may kind of uh, have a better biomechanic stability. So why do we need to do an accelerated crosslink cage? And that is something that uh, people ask. So uh, Smile should be okay. Uh, but then uh, there are also the other aspects where the eligibility criteria has not been clearly defined as to which cases you will do smile extra and the cross-linking protocol which has to be used is again not clearly defined. Uh, potential side effects like haze also is one of the concerns and uh, the concern that there may be a hyperopic shift over a long term. Plus, it increases the overall cost of the procedure and smile again is an expensive procedure expensive consumables, so increasing the cost of the procedure is also a concern. So the clinical decision making, again, you can look at three criteria. The first is the, the random, random and ectasia risk assessment. And if you have a risk assessment of score of three or more, then probably you can uh, look at uh, doing an extra procedure. So zero to two is a low level of risk and uh, you can proceed with surface ablation or LASIK. If it is three, then you have a moderate level of risk and then you have to take caution, consider a special informed consent. And um, if you are just doing a surface ablation, again, the safety has not been established. So you will have to consider the refractive stability, degree of astigmatism, asymmetry between the eyes, family history of uh, keratoconus, and then look at uh, a decision on whether you want to do an extra procedure or whether you want to do a fake chiral. Then you have the high risk, uh, which is the Randleman uh, score of four or more. Uh, here, uh, we do not perform uh, basic or uh, and safety of uh, surface ablation also has not been established. So, uh, you for moderate level risks, you can do an extra procedure, high risk. Uh, it's better to avoid doing a corneal procedure and probably go in for a fake chiral. Uh, the PTA metric also is uh, something that you can look at. For smile, you will have to take the cap thickness and lenticular thickness, and it should be uh, less than 40% uh, PTA. And you look at the bad display, and the overall uh, D has to be um, less than 1.65. Um, so, overall, uh, D, if it's more than 1.65, then it is uh, at risk. We uh, published the first uh, paper on Smile Extra. We defined the protocols and uh, we have been doing Smile Extra since 2013. We had this publication in 2015 in uh, the Journal of Ophthalmology and this was the first uh, publication which described uh, Smile Extra. And um, after that, of course, uh, we have had a longer, that was a one year follow up, but now we have had a longer follow up. And, and this is uh, again some data where we looked at 82 eyes of 41 patients with a mean age of 26 years. And uh, inclusion criteria were high myopia or myopic astigmatism, more than six diopters up to 10 diopters, borderline thickness, 
480 microns or less, suspect topography, but not frank keratoconus. Young patients, less than 30 years, any ATOP present, history of eye rubbing, family history of keratoconus also are included. Best corrected visual acuity should be better than 612 to do smile extra. The surgical technique, basically you do the smile with creation of the lenticule with an optical zone of 6 to 6.5 mm. You use a cap thickness of between 100 to 120 microns and a 2 mm incision. 0.1 mL Vibex extra riboflavin, that is 0.25% uh, saline is applied to the interface for 60 seconds. Then uh, intraop, uh, you can use the Vismax slit lamp to look at the diffusion of the dye in the AC. And then you expose the cornea to UVA 45 milliwatts uh, for 75 seconds through the cap. Uh, you have not removed the epithelium here. Total energy de uh, delivered is uh, 3.4 joules. So the mean follow-up was uh, 24 months. Uh, there were no intraop or post-op complication on street lamp. Examination, uh, mild transient interface haze, which is visually non-significant, and this clears over a uh, couple of months. This was a two-year post-op result, and you can see that uh, the mean spherical equivalent uh, pre-op was minus 4.36, and post-op it was uh, 0.166, which is a very good uh, correction, and uh, that's the mean keratometry. Uh, central, mean central corneal thickness post op was 412, pre op it was 482, so these are thinner corneas. Uh, there was no difference, significant difference in the endothelial cell density, uh, which was the safety of the procedure. And mean, mean visual acuity pre op was uh, 6 by 6, uncorrected. Uh, this is uh, one of the examples I want to show you. Uh, so, this is a 21 year old female. Manifest refraction is uh, minus two and a half with some cylinder improving to six by six. The central corneal thickness is 475 microns, thinner corneas. PTA again is uh, 45.25 in the right eye and 52.75 uh, in the left eye again at risk. Randall Randleman score is uh, six in both eyes. So this is again uh, higher risk. Uh, bad display here is borderline actually. This is the topography. Topography itself is normal. There's no asymmetry or skewing. But if you look at the bad display, it is 2.05. So more than 1.65 in a younger patient is kind of suspicious. So after the post-op, we looked at the OCTs and we found a mean depth of uh, stromal demarcation at uh, 200 and around 230 microns at three months and 225 microns at six months. Uh, so this shows that there is something that is happening where you get a demarcation line. Uh, so this is the uh, other uh, retrospective study which we do, which we did. Uh, because this is again, we, wa we wanted to know, okay, these are borderline cases. Just doing SMILE uh, may have been sufficient because many of them say that uh, SMILE itself uh, is supposed to be biomechanically superior and it may offer some safety in these borderline cases. So we wanted to look at uh, retrospectively our cases. Now we have nearly done about 10,000 smiles. Uh, so this was a retrospective study where corneal topographies of all patients who underwent smile or smile extra from December 2012 to August 2019 were analyzed. So we looked at uh, the incidence of ectasia and we had 10 eyes of ectasia out of 7,024 eyes where we had done smile or smile extra, that is 0.14% in seven years. And we looked at the borderline topographies as per the criteria, and we had 999 borderline topographies, and normal topographies, we had 6,025. So the borderline topographies, either smile or smile extra were uh, um, performed. Uh, 594 underwent regular smile, smile extra 405. And uh, normal topographies all underwent uh, smile, which is 6,025. In the normal uh, topographies which underwent SMILE, we had an incidence of 0.03%, that is two eyes out of 6,025, which is kind of a normal um, incidence of ectasia, which can occur probably either being post-op or something like that. So two eyes out of 6,000 is kind of acceptable. But if you look at the borderline topographies, we did SMILE in these borderline, these were the initial cases. And we had an ectasia of 0 0.80, which is on the higher side, 8 out of 999 eyes, which is on the higher side. Whereas smile extra, which was done for borderline 
topographies in 405 um, eyes, we had a zero incidence of ectasia. So this shows that Smile Extra definitely offers protection in these borderline cases. And uh, these were the 10 eyes which we treated. 10 eyes uh, underwent pocket C3R and out of which four we also did freely with uh, pocket C3R, that is tissue implantation, femtosecond intrasternal ventricular implantation. Uh, if you look at the other studies, uh, even the literature, uh, the recently published studies, 2019, there was a study in Journal of Ophthalmology which showed that um, the uh, combining uh, corneal cross-linking with smile procedure, smile extra, is a promising tool to prevent ectasia in high-risk patients, safe and simple procedure that can be offered uh, to patients undergoing smile with risk of ectasia. Here, uh, basically, they found that 90% uh, of eyes had post-op uh, uncorrected vision of 2020 and 97, uncorrected vision of 2030 at uh, 24 months. And uh, you can see the efficacy index between smile and smile extra are very similar 1.09 and 1.12. Mean safety also was very similar, 1.29, 1.28. And uh, corneal biomechanics, the post-op CRF was slightly higher in the smile extra group and remained stable at uh, two years. This is uh, another paper published by um, Tommy Chan and group where they use 18 milliwatts for 45 seconds and, and uh, mean follow-up was six months and they uh, concluded that Smile Extra had a good overall safety profile and predictability at six months, but they found that uh, there was a slight difference in the safety and efficacy index. And there was another very interesting article published in the uh, Journal of uh, Cataract and Refractive Surgery 2015 from Mexico, where they treated 15 eyes of form frustrate keratoconus uh, and low myopia at 3 milliwatts for 30 minutes, 5.4 joules total energy, and followed it for 24 months. And uh, they concluded that um, corneal cross-linking along with uh, SMILE is a promising treatment option for patients uh, with form for keratoconus. They didn't see any progress. To conclude, um, I mean, before doing a SMILE extra, identifying eyes at risk is a key factor in preventing ectasia. And uh, most of the studies have found that small, uh, simultaneous cross-linking is safe and effective for prophylaxis of uh, corneal ectasia and borderline uh, cornea. So it's like a uh, safety seat belt when you are indecisive and uh, decision to perform extra should be decided on a case-to-case -case basis uh, and the anecdotal evidence uh, biomechanics with smile extra may be, be better compared to smile alone as none of the borderline corneas that had smile extra developed uh, ectasia in our group. Uh, so this is uh, something which is interesting and we have sent it for publication to the GRS and it is under review, uh, this large series of 7,000 press cases. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sirigiles. Uh, 